So I'm going to go through multiple choice in this video and the rest of the playlist will be all of the other questions. Okay, so let's just go through it. Hi, I'm running through this, which is an OCR gateway, second paper, they call it paper four on the higher tier. And these are going to be the multiple choice ones. So stay tuned, make sure that you ha actually attempt the question before really looking at the answers because some of them are distractors and they're designed to seem like they might be right. Which sentence about the electromagnetic waves is true? Well, they're not longitudinal waves, so it can't be that one. They are transverse waves, so it's got to be one of these three. Transmitted through air with the same velocity, transmitted through space with different velocities, transmitted through space with the same velocity. The answer is D. It's a hard one to think about. It's definitely not different velocities, okay? Empty space, they have the same speed, which is three times 10 to the eight meters per second speed of light in a vacuum. Through air with the same velocity, now it could be that one, couldn't it? But air, I guess, has different densities. So that is less likely to be the right answer than D is. So I'm going to go with D. Light from other galaxies can be redshifted. What sentence about redshift is true? Light from galaxies moving away from us undergoes redshift. Yeah, that does make sense to me. I'll check the other one in case there's a more correct one. Light from galaxies moving towards us undergoes redshift. Now that's blue shift, getting the wavelength getting shorter. It's blue shift. Um, nearby galaxies show more redshift than distant galaxies. That's not correct. It's the distant ones show more redshift. Stationary galaxies don't change their, their colour, so that's that one there. Which row in the table about nuclear fission is true? Okay, um, fission is when a uranium, so they're all okay, is hit by a neutron, so it can't be B or C. Okay, it absorbs that neutron and then splits into smaller nuclei and gives that more nu nu neutrons, so it's not creating larger ones. Fission is large, splitting into small, and fusion is small, joining to make large. Which wave has the longest wavelength and is used in radiotherapy for uh, cancer treatment? So this, what's tricked people up here is that word, and... So which is the longest wavelength in the whole thing is B, all right? But infrared is not used in cancer treatment, so neither is ultraviolet, so that's gone as well. Gamma ray or X-ray, well, X-ray has a longer wavelength than gamma uh, rays, so it's gotta be D. Student wants to calculate kinetic energy of a toy car, so just basically, do you remember the equation for kinetic energy? Well, I just remember it in algebra. So which one says the same thing? Well, it's not that one because it's got the squared. It's not that one because it's not times two. It's not that one because it's ma not mass and velocity squared. It's just mass times velocity squared. So the answer is D. Which diagram shows the action of a strong concave lens? So concave, cave in, in the middle, they are this. They are diverging lenses. So this happens to parallel beams of light. Um, which one shows the action? It's not going to be either of these two then. And it says a strong concave lens, so deciding between this one or this one is going to be C, which is doing more of the diverging. Which sentence about the nuclear fusion of hydrogen is true? When hydrogen atomic nuclei join to make a large one, energy absorbed. No, fusion liberates energy, gives that energy. When hydrogen atomic nuclei join to make a large one, energy is emitted. That seems about right. When hydrogen hydrogen, it's not that they split, is it? So it can't be either of these two. So it's got to be B. Okay, so a lorry accelerates from zero kilometers per hour to 100 kilometers per hour in about 25 seconds. Estimate the acceleration of the of the lorry. So this is quite a tricky one because we're gonna to have to convert this into meters per second before we go ahead and do it. So let's just figure out. So that is a hundred times a thousand meters per hour and hours has 3,600 seconds in it. So let's just go ahead and do that. 100 times a thousand divided by 3,600 gives me a speed of 27.8 meters per second. But it's not asking me for the speed, it's asking me for the acceleration. So 27.8 over 25 gives me 1.1, so the answer is A. In the mark scheme it says B, so if I've done something wrong, can you leave a comment somewhere? Because I've, I've looked over this and I can't see where I've gone wrong if I've. Um, just remind you, the acceleration is the change in speed over time. So, um, which statement describes Newton's third law of motion? Um, energy can neither be created or destroyed. No, that's the law of conservation moment. 
No, that's the law of conservation of energy. Newton's third law is about forces. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That's Newton's third law. Let's just double check though. That's Newton two, isn't it? Forces mass times acceleration. Objects with balanced forces stay at rest or in constant motion. That's Newton one. So we're after Newton's third law. So it's gonna be B. Which formula is correct? Okay, well actually this is again, it's just an equation you need to remember. Pressure is a force normal to the surface over the area of that surface. That's right, but mm, there's something going on there, so it's not going to be that one, is it? Pressure in Pascal is force normal to the surface in kilograms over the area of the surface in meters squared. Well, no, force is in newtons, not kilograms, so it's not that one. Also, the previous one had meters cubed there. Pressure is force normal to the surface over area of the surface that's missing the squared, so it's got to be D. The um, Units are all correct. They're all the same equation, but the units are the only the only the units are only correct in D. Which sentence about pressure in liquids is correct? Uh, pressure causes a net force at all angles to any surface. Uh, that's not really the case. Okay, it does cause forces at all angles, but the, the overall force can be said to be acting at right angles. So B it seems okay for now. Pressure causes a net force downwards. No, it's not. The pressure is in all directions, okay? Um, pressure causes a net force upwards. No, the pressure is in all directions. The effect in a liquid in gravity is that the pressure will be slightly higher underneath an object, and that causes upthrust. Right, there is an overall upwards force, but every single surface has a pressure acting on it. It's just that because of pressure in a column of liquid, uh, the deeper you go, the greater h is basically, the greater the pressure is. So that is why there's a net upwards force called the upthrust. There's a nice bit of physics actually, um, the upthrust stuff in the new GCCs. The radio wave has a frequency of 3 times 10 to the 6 hertz and a velocity of 3 times 10 to the 8. What's the wavelength for the radio wave? So do you remember your equations basically, is this what this is saying? Uh, wave speed is frequency times wavelength. You've got to rearrange that for wavelength, so that becomes V over F. So V is this one and F is this one. They're in the correct units. Hertz is the SI unit of frequency, so that's okay. 3 times 10 to the 8 over 3 times 10 to the 6. One. So the answer is C. Next one, a moving rocket has a velocity of 20 meters per second and a momentum of 24 kilograms meters per second. Calculate the mass of the velocity. So this is, do you know your equations, basically? P is mv, um, basically momentum is mass times velocity. You told the momentum, you told the velocity, but you want to work out the mass. So moment, uh, momentum over velocity gives you mass. thousand two hundred so D now um, do just be careful when you're typing in the numbers of zeros when you do this type of question you can see the distractor here is if you made an error with the number of zeros okay lunar lander weighs 24,500 newtons on the moon and has a mass of 15,100 kilograms. Calculate the gravitational field strength. So again, do you remember weight is m times g? Um, yes, you do. Good. Uh, weight is m times g. That's the weight. That is m. So g is w over m. 24,500 over 15,100. One point six two newtons per kilogram B. Okay. Um, again, do the calculation. Don't look at the answers until you've done the calculation. A power supply provides uh, four forty-eight thousand coulombs of charge, which transfers twenty-four thousand joules of energy to a circuit, calculate the voltage, again do you remember your equations, energy is voltage times charge, or voltage is defined as energy per unit charge, so I just need to do energy over 48,000, over, energy over charge, how much energy does the charge have, is the voltage, 
0.5 volts A. Okay, I hope that was helpful to you. That's the multiple choice ones. It's worth noting here that some of those questions, even though they were in paper four, which is units five to eight, they use equations that you first meet in um, in P2 in the first half. So you do need to be aware that they're always going to be using any equation in any, in any possible exam. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. I'm Kit Best Masters and this is Gorilla Physics. We're all about you understanding your physics more so you're gonna enjoy it and you're gonna get more confident and do better in your exams.